Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I have something special for you guys today. This here is an iPhone 4S in near pristine condition, jailbroken to all heck, and running on iOS 5.0.1. This is a phone that at most has been updated once, and it's been tweaked out about as far as possible with old iOS. It is really cool to look at all these classic jailbreak changes, and a little bit of a time capsule of Apple history. And it only costed me $2. Yeah. Yeah, two dollars. How, you ask? Well, I need to establish a bit more context here, and then we'll take an actual look at the phone itself. A family friend owns a business where he tends to buy and sell a bit of everything, but he reached out to me telling me he had two barrels full of phones if I wanted them. That's right, two barrels, as in full-on barrels, just full of old phones. He had bought them at a recycler years ago, and they'd just been sitting around doing nothing. Most in bad condition, but odds were a good few would be working as well. He told me he'd been offered three dollars a pound for the phones, and he estimated that they weighed a total of around 600 pounds, so uh, not really money I wanted to spend, but we came to a compromise where I would pick through the phones and take any that I wanted before he would sell them for scrap. I would pay two dollars for every iPhone and one dollar for any other kind of phone. Pretty sweet deal, but my odds of finding too many phones in good condition were a bit slim. This was a pretty long day of work, it took me six hours to go through them all, in the sun and at times rain, and I ended up with about 150 phones. 40 of which being a variety of old iPhones, 3Gs, 3GSs, 4s, 4Ss, 1 iPhone 5, and 1 iPhone 5S. As of right now, I've still barely gotten any of the phones booted up or working or tested in any capacity. I found a lot of the older iPhones do still work, and some do have issues. The iPhone 5, for example, is locked and has a broken LCD that turns completely purple after being on for a couple seconds. On the Android and flip phone side of things, I found some phones that have worked, but again, I haven't gone through too many of them yet. I've been needing to do this for a while now. Unfortunately, water had gotten into the barrels. They had been out in a spot where the rain got into them. So the bottom fifth or maybe quarter of the barrel was completely flooded, making all those phones likely water damage to the point of no return. Regardless, I'll keep picking through these over time and who knows, I may find something else interesting. I did get some cool old phones too, like one of the first clamshell cell phones ever with the Motorola MicroTac. Pretty neat. So back to the iPhone 4S. When I pulled the phone out of my bin of devices I had bought, I immediately noticed just how great the condition was. The phone looked practically flawless, except for that home button, as it seemed to have the little white square rubbed off or something, perhaps it had been replaced, and there was even still a screen protector on the front. So I plugged the phone in and excitedly saw the old iOS battery icon show up, which meant not only did it work, but it was also on an older version of software, which is always awesome. For those who may not know, Apple doesn't really allow you to downgrade software. And while there are some runarounds and exceptions, finding a phone that's never been updated or even updated very little is extremely, extremely rare. I mean, who doesn't update their phone at some point, right? Now, I do actually already have a couple iPhone 4Ss on iOS 5 that I bought years ago on eBay, but neither are on a version as low as 5.0.1. And when the phone turned on, I was immediately greeted with that classic slide to unlock, except something looked a little bit off. And yeah, so as we can already see, the phone is absolutely jailbroken. Unlocking it to the home screen, we get a ton of icons, very small icons, and we can scroll through the dock, which is more fun than it should be. Immediately, of course, I went to settings, check the version, and bam, there we go, iOS 5.0.1. The model number there, as well as on the back of the phone, tells us indeed this is an iPhone 4S, and a phone that has likely been updated at most once in its lifetime. So yeah, I found this in a bin of scrap phones, and this was in the watered area, by the way. This thing I thought was for sure dead to water damage, but it's really weird that this was with scrap phones, especially because they were purchased from a phone recycler, meaning someone had assumedly purposely recycled this phone. I'm also very lucky there was no passcode, though this doesn't seem like a phone that someone recycled. Now, it's not really a surprise that someone didn't reset a phone before they would recycle it. That is unfortunately very common. If you're gonna sell your phone, you're gonna give it away, you're gonna recycle it, whatever you're gonna do, always reset it. Who knows what person data someone could find on you, some YouTuber like me going through old phones. Of course, I try to respect privacy. Uh, this man even had notifications still for text messages, which was pretty crazy. So, so that was that was strange, right? The man who owned this phone was named Edmund, but why was this phone thrown away? Well, at first, I thought I found my answer when I unplugged the phone and it immediately died. Okay, so that makes sense. It's a bad battery. At least that's the most likely conclusion. The only thing is this was submerged in water. 
water at some point, so it's likely there's water damage to some extent. The phone turning on is a really good sign. Replacing a battery on an old iPhone like this is very simple. You start by removing the two screws on the bottom of the device, and then it's a process of simply sliding off the back cover, literally just kind of pushing up on it and it unclips and revealing the internals of the phone. So right away, uh, obviously this looks pretty funky and clearly water has been inside this device causing some kind of uh, rust or corrosion or residue, something going on here. But it doesn't mean the phone won't work. I mean, we've already turned it on. It does need to be cleaned, but we can at least pop the battery in and test it. And if it works, I'll be able to clean it up and put it back together and we'll have a working iPhone 4S on iOS 5. So let's get started. First thing you should do, even if you weren't replacing the battery, is disconnect it. So you just have to unscrew where this little plate is here, and then you can just kind of fold it up. And that right there is actually disconnecting the battery. You can see those pins there. And then it's a matter of pulling the battery out. So these batteries are stuck on there with zero screws besides the power connector, but instead adhesive on the back, which is effective, a little too effective, because I was really having trouble getting it out. Ideally, you don't want to be poking at the battery too much. I just kind of got under it a little bit to give me some leeway, and then I was able to finally pull the battery off. So simple enough, and after that, it's time for the new battery. So I plop it in there. I didn't even grab the charger. I just wanted to see if it would turn on straight up. And sure enough, the Apple logo actually pops up here. So that means the battery has some juice in it. Good sign. And then we get uh, Marilyn Monroe holding her gun and the uh, lock screen. Yeah, I, I still don't really know what's going on with that one wallpaper. But anyways, uh, going in here, we can see it's all working fine. And uh, the screen protector looked pretty ugly to me. It was kind of bugging me. So I decided to kind of peel it off. But anyways, I went ahead off camera here and just cleaned everything up, put it all back together. And then there we go. We have a fully working iOS 5.0.1 iPhone 4S straight out of 2011. Really? You can see old Cydia here, which is just so nostalgic. But you know, again, the phone is in pretty good condition. It still doesn't make sense that someone would give this phone to a recycler. Phone recyclers do what it sounds like. They don't keep the phones. They don't refurbish them. I don't know if they normally would sell to a third party like the guy I know, but this phone really was a mystery to me. So I broke a bit of a cardinal rule that I had for myself and I looked at the text messages. I know I'm a horrible person and a few things stood out. The most noteworthy being that the latest one that was on red was from February 2012. This phone came out October 2011. This phone is like six months old or at least was the last time it was used. Now the top text said if you find this phone call this number. That text was from nearly 10 years ago but I think we're gonna have to call that number. Who knows if it's even still in service but I don't know what else to do. I have to know what happened here. It makes very little sense. If the phone was lost, sure. There was some mention about some kind of hike or a mountain. Again, I didn't want to look too close. It felt, uh, I felt guilty, you know, it's like someone's private text messages and stuff, but there was something about a mountain. So perhaps Edmund had lost the phone while hiking, except, well, how did the phone end up with a recycler? That doesn't make any sense. Well, okay, maybe the phone was stolen. Sure, uh, that could make sense, but if the phone was stolen, why is it still in the exact same state that it would have been almost 10 years ago? Why wouldn't the thief have reset it or tried to sell it or something. Someone somewhere along the line should have reset this thing. There's no passcode. It would have been really easy to start this phone up fresh and bam, brand new iPhone practically. 2012, this was top of the line, especially February. So a lot of questions, not a lot of answers, and I'm hoping to get some answers. I don't know if we will, but yeah, I think we're going to have to make a phone call and see what happens here. I am beyond curious at this point. Hey, how's it going? It's, uh, it's been a while. It's been a long while. I, uh kind of just forgot to finish this video. And it's disappointing because I actually was really invested in it. I wanted to see how it would play out and I just completely forgot. But here we are, November. It's the end of November pretty much at this point. Um, I started working on this video in May. It's around the time I got the phone, I believe. So, you know, it's what, six months? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty bad. Uh, blame procrastination more than anything else. But hey, we're here now, at least, I guess. But I wanted to play this out because uh, yeah, iOS 5, iPhone 4s. I mean, not exactly a common thing, especially uh, with the whole backstory behind it, too. I really want to find out who owned this thing and what happened. So today we're going to actually call uh, the owner. Hopefully there was a number texted, of course, that said, hey, call this number if you find this phone. So we're going to call it and see if it's if it's still around, if it's still owned by the person who texted that. Um, but we're going to do that. I got the 
phone right here. There we are. So it's still still working fine. Battery replacement went perfectly. Battery battery's great now, so that that's good. My dog wanted to join us. Uh, this is Cola. If you've never if you've never met her before, uh, she's very cute, very sweet, very very good very good dog. Cola's going after my my drawstrings on my 91 Tech hoodie, which is available now, by the way. Uh, <laughs> link in the description if you want to buy some merch. Woo. I had to put Cola on the floor because she was um, not being cooperative. <sighs> I can't show that. Uh, <laughs> so I got the, the number here. I, I just showed it on the screen, which I should not do, but I've got it here and we're going to call. Hello. Please leave a message after the tone. Uh, hi, my name is Josh. This is going to sound very strange, but I actually found um, an old iPhone 4S that uh, said to call this number if this is yours or someone uh, you know. The name on it is Edmund. Okay, so no answer. It's not a huge surprise, but the phone did ring, so someone still has that number. Uh, the question is now, you know, is it the person who owned the phone back then or maybe a relative or something? So so there's, there's other numbers on here. He doesn't actually have any contacts, which is kind of interesting. He never actually put in any contacts. So the numbers are all from his texts. And that's about it. Going through this guy's phone feels so weird, you know? But... I don't know what else to do. wonder if I, like, tried calling this number. Like, the phone's number. Because couldn't he have gotten it transferred if he lost his phone? And kept the same number? He might have. How do I even see the number? <laughs> oh, there's actually no SIM in this. I don't know how I didn't notice that before. There's no SIM card in here. Um, so, I can't. I don't know what the number was. Might be a way to find that, but there's no SIM. So that, that's a little strange uh, for a phone that was lost. Someone popped out the SIM card. Looks like a lot of uh, calls the day this probably went missing, which looks like February 24th, 2012. A lot of them from the number I just called, but there's another number here uh, that was calling it quite a bit. So I could try that one. Now this doesn't make sense. If there's if there was people calling this phone, the SIM card must have been in it when it was lost, right? That doesn't make sense otherwise. So if someone found this phone and pulled out the SIM card, at some point um, without returning the phone. This, this is very strange. I don't I don't understand how this happened because it was never reset. The SIM card was pulled out. So someone at some point had it in their hands and they never did anything with it. They just pulled out the SIM card. I left that one message. So I think I'm going to leave it at that and I'll, I'll wait a little bit and see what happens, I guess. If we don't get an answer, we don't get an answer. Um, but uh, hopefully we do. And if not, I mean, it's not like it's a huge deal. I mean, it was pretty much a decade ago that th this guy lost his phone. I'm sure he'd love to have it back. I'm not going to reset it or anything, obviously. I'll just kind of keep it as it is. And it's, it, I mean, it's a pretty cool just time capsule of old iOS jailbreaking, right? So anyways, um, we'll, I'll probably talk a little bit about uh, some of the quirks of this thing a little bit more here, and then uh, we'll wrap this video up. So uh, yeah, back to voiceover Josh for now. <laughs> And so here we are. Uh, it's been not quite a week, almost about five days. I'm going to leave it for now. I haven't fully decided whether or not to try calling some of the other numbers from his text messages. Could be an interesting follow up video if we do. So uh, we'll see what happens there. I'll keep you guys in the loop, maybe on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me over there at 91 underscore tech. And so before we fully wrap this up, let's just take one more look at this phone because it is really, really, really cool. I am so lucky to have found it. Considering the circumstances, you know, to find such a good condition iPhone 4S on such an old version and jailbroken it's the, the odds are very low you can see all these classic games he has this is straight out of 2011 there's like iGag and shazam the old instagram you've got fruit ninja there old facebook old messenger i don't even hardly remember that icon very very faintly maybe and then you've got a ton of jailbreaking stuff too so if we go to settings and we kind of scroll through here there, there's so many tweaks here activator used to be huge it might still be i'm not fully sure on that one there's barrel which he wasn't using lots of classics here fake operator infinite dog Springs of Eyes. Now that, that's a classic right there. Zeppelin with the little Stormtrooper on the top left. I remember using that on my old iPod Touch back in the day, my iPod Touch 6. When it was back on iOS 8, I had that thing jailbroken to all heck, and that was a lot of fun. This is, again, a bit of a time capsule, you know? It is really, really cool, and if uh, you guys have any suggestions on what I could do with this, or somebody watching this recognizes this phone somehow, and knows a person named Edmund, or you are Edmund, reach out to me. Uh, DM me on Instagram or Twitter, 
actually the best way to reach me is probably our community discord which of course is linked in the description and you can talk to a moderator over there and they'll get in contact with me if I'm not online at the moment the odds of me finding this guy are very low but I, I'm tempted to just do like you know some kind of huge investigation to try to track him down but anyways I'm gonna end it here I know we haven't looked too close at the phone but it belonged to someone so it just feels a little off to me there's even photos on here still I'm pretty much leaving this thing as is I'm not gonna do anything to it I'm not gonna connect it to Wi-Fi I'm not gonna reset it I'm just gonna leave it be pure time capsule of iOS 5.0.1 straight out of February 2012 it makes no sense why this thing was recycled after it had the sim card removed and was assumedly lost but it was and now I have it and I got it for two dollars hopefully you enjoyed this very interesting video hopefully interesting I found it pretty interesting and if you did maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content similar to this also if you want to see more of those phones from that big barrel I'm gonna have to keep going through those maybe there will be another gem who knows but that all being said thank you so much for watching I am Josh from 91 tech and I will see you all next time